Welcome back, guys, to episode number nine in this series. If you guys haven't seen any of the other episodes, you should definitely go back and check them out, but you do not need to to follow along with this video. So in this video, we're actually setting up this awesome little loading bar here. So when we actually get to our index page, we want our loading bar to show up and do our zero to 100%. And this is the effect that we have built, that we built for this video. So we actually start at our 0% and actually slide all the way up to our 100. And so there's a couple things about it that I still want to fix. Like you can see there's still a little bit of stuff sticking out on the sides and this is kind of jittery here and I'm going to fix those things later on. But the main idea was to get this bar actually moving and uh, this guy moving and our percentage counting up and it looks pretty sweet. So be sure to stick around for this video. And if you guys are enjoying this series or if this is your first time watching the video and you end up really liking it, please leave me a like down below. That'd be awesome. And then be sure to comment with suggestions and whatever else you have and I hope you guys really enjoy this episode. All right guys so let's get started with this video. So as you can see this is where we are right now at the beginning of this video. So we are actually building this level bar and you guys have already seen what it's going to look like. Obviously right here I wasn't sure that I was going to actually make this portion for this video so I had already st started setting it up and then I thought hey this will actually be pretty cool to make for a video. What I can do is show you guys actually what I've set up so far and it's pretty simple. I just added a new div inside of our game wrapper to hold our login stuff and so I had built it a little bit differently before because I had all the login stuff. We initially thought that we were going to do the login and stuff on the same page but we decided to just be easier since we have to refresh the page when they submit their information uh, when they log in that it would just be easier to do that on a separate page and then just uh, redirect them to the actual game page after they've logged in. So in this case, when they first load this login or the first load the game page, what we want is we want a loading bar. So we want a nice loading effect when we start the page up and then after it's finished loading, we just want all of our elements and stuff to slide in. And actually I have to fix that because you can still see the... Uh, because all I did was just move them off of the screen and you can still see them popping in over here. So I'm going to have to actually probably display none on those just to get rid of them fully. But for right now, let's focus on this loading bar. So I'm actually going to have to make a couple adjustments here. So the loading bar right now is just one element, but ideally what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a couple more elements, one of them being the actual loading bar that's inside of here. And then also just changing it so that the stroke is actually a different element above the one that we have already. Because if it sits here, then our bar that we make is going to be like sitting on top of the border, which we're not going to want, we're going to want that border to actually sit on top of our actual loading bar that's inside of it. So in this case, it's pretty simple to do. What we're going to do is actually make two new divs. And let's give this one ID of LG loading frame. And then we'll just make another div under that for bar. So the bar will actually be, if you take a look at our Illustrator file here, this is what we're going for. And so we're making this bar right here inside of this, this guy. And then remember that other div is just for the actual stroke, which actually they are separated in here too on the Illustrator file. If we just jump in here, we'll give these some styles now. So let's jump back over into our CSS and find where we're actually styling the login. So right here we have our LG loading. So what we're gonna do is just actually take this border, copy it and delete it from there and we're going to make our LG loading frame in this case. So now this frame is going to have a width and a height of 100%, and we're gonna just give it a position absolute because we want it to sit on top of our actual actual bar too. So if we do that and then we just do a left of zero and a top of zero, this thing's gonna sit right in that left-hand corner, top left-hand corner, which is exactly what we want. And then we wanna go ahead and just give it a border radius to match the one that we already have, which is our 15 pixels. And then we can go ahead and paste in that border. And now we should notice that when we jump back in, that border is still there. And I think we have to add one more thing, which is our box sizing property, because that's going to make it look like it's supposed to. So there we go. So now that border is sitting nicely on there. It doesn't even look like anything has changed, but it has. And actually what we'll do is just to get that gradient effect back, we'll jump back into our HTML and just copy our shade in out property or class that we have and actually just put that on the frame. So we should see that nice gradient or actually, sorry, that was in the ID. So just 
paste it into the a new class. And then you'll see we got that nice gradient around the edge now and that looks a lot better. So now let's go ahead and style this loading bar. So the loading bar is actually just going to be very similar to this one actually in the sense that it's going to have all of these properties. So we're just going to actually copy those and then do our loading bar and paste those in. And now what we wanna do is give this a transform origin because normally the transforms are from the center of the box. So if we made the scale like 0.5, then it would just be 50%, but it would be scaled to the middle. And actually I'll just show you guys just for, uh, for demonstration purposes that if we did a scale of 0.5, you'll see what I'm talking about. But first we have to give this a background and we'll just make a white background for right now. So now you see what I'm talking about here is that it scales to, from the middle, which isn't what we want. And also we didn't want a scale, we wanted a scale X. So if we do scale X, it won't mess up our Y value. So now you'll notice that that white bar is still sitting on top of that, which obviously we made that border so that we could do a Z index of let's just say five and actually push that above it. So now it's sitting under that, which is super cool. And then again, we can just jump in here and do what we were doing with our transform origin. And let's just say on the X value, it's going to be left and then Y value doesn't really matter, but we can say center. And so there we go. Now it is in the spot that we're looking for and it's 50% of the width, which is super cool. And now of course, all we have to do is give our div here another border radius. And in this case, or actually in this case, what we would do is just go ahead and give the loading bar that these are inside of, just give it an overflow hidden. So now this overflow of hidden is just going to remove that, but you'll see it's still a little bit sitting outside of it and it's not that great, but we're gonna see how it looks when we actually put our color in there. So let's go ahead and grab that purple color we're using here, which is the same color we're using on the border, but we're obviously going to just lower the opacity on it. So we can just give this an opacity of 0.5 and uh, see how that looks. And that actually looks pretty good. And so you don't even notice that it was sticking out over here anymore. And now what we wanted for our effect is to actually have this, these two pieces that we have, our percentage and then our little icon right here, to kind of sit with this here as it moves. These two pieces would be sitting like right about here. And then as soon as the bar gets to about this point, then these would start moving. So they, they would be sitting there until this bar got to be about here and then it would start moving with it. And so that's not that bad to do and actually we'll just be able to edit that in script. But for now we actually have to just set up this div and kind of position it right there. All right, awesome. So let's actually build this that piece now. So let's create a new div for these things to sit inside of and we'll do LG loading percent. So this will actually be where we can hold that percentage in that icon. And so what we can do is probably just add like uh, like an H3 or whatever and say, we'll just say 60% and then just give that a space and we'll actually put the image that we want just sitting right next to it inside of the H3. And that's just to get that image to sit nicely next to the text. And then we'll go ahead and just find our actual icon in here for our helm. And then you'll notice obviously the, uh, <laughs> The helmet is like insanely big right here and it's being covered up so you can't even uh, see it. So obviously gonna have to give that some styles. So what we're gonna do is just take our loading percentage that we have, so our LG loading percent. And we'll give this, uh, we don't need to do a width, but we can do a height of 100%. And then now if we just do um, access that image and give that a height of 100% also, you'll see that it doesn't work. <laughs> so awesome, that's exactly what we want. <laughs> I'm just kidding, that's not what we want. We want this to actually work. So I was just looking in our inspector here and I guess I just have to give that H3 a styling as well. I thought that it would have defaulted to a height um, of 100% by default, but we have to just go ahead and give that H3 a height of 100% and that should work. So now you'll see that it shows up the way that we wanted it to. Now obviously the image is still too big for what we're looking for, so we have to come in here and just kind of fiddle with the values a little bit. So let's try 50% and that's obviously way too small. So we're gonna find a nice balance there. And probably, uh, that's probably still too big. 
So we'll try 65% and see, and that might be good. So let's give it a shot here. So let's give this line or this H3 a line height of our 30 pixels just to kind of center it in the middle for us. And it looks like it was the text was already kind of centered in the middle for us there. And then another issue we notice is that it's kind of faded out. And that's because I think the drop shadow or actually the bar might even be sitting on top of that text too. So what we could do is just say, okay, so I was super confused as to why that actually wasn't working. It was just because I the other ones are positioned absolute with Z indexes, but this one's not positioned absolute. And the problem with positioned absolute and using Z indexes is that position absolute elements will always sit on top of the other elements regardless of the Z index. At least that's the uh, that's what I've seen from my experience. So what we can do is we already gave it a Z index. So we gave it a position absolute and we're pretty much just going to have to copy all of these basic styles that we already have here. So this gives me an opportunity to just kind of, since we've already used it three times, we're just gonna say LG loading, and then we're just gonna go directly inside of that and say that all of the elements inside of it are going to have these five styles. Basically just to access everything, you just use that little asterisk. And so if we paste that in there, we can go ahead and delete all of these things now that we're copying and pasting a bunch of times. And um, now you'll notice that it will work the way it's supposed to. So now you can see that our Z indexes are working again and that's what we wanted. Now you'll notice that there's some styling issues obviously. So the first one is that the image is not sitting perfectly next to the text. So the text is like nicely centered in the middle of the bar but the image is kind of floated up top. So what we can do to fix that is I hope this works because I sometimes I have problems with this but we'll position this relative and then we'll just say we want to give it a top of let's say five pixels. So hopefully that's going to move it down five pixels. So now I just want to fill with the line height a little bit here so I think 33 pixels is pretty good to move that and then you'll notice we have to obviously move this thing back up now by a couple pixels so I think now we should be good we have that text sitting nicely next to the image and that should work perfectly for what we're looking for and then what we can do is go ahead and just position that give that or not the image but the actual percentage box that we made just give that a um, in this case Instead of doing the left of zero, we'll try and give it a left of uh, 10 pixels and see how that looks. So actually, that's a good place to start. And maybe we can come out a little bit more just so it's not really stuck there. All right, awesome. So our loading bar is starting to look pretty cool now. We've almost finished all of the styles. The only thing that we have left on our document was just our preparing game message here and that's pretty easy to do basically we can use that loading frame that we have and actually just let's say put another tag inside of here at the beginning with a p tag that just says preparing game and we already have styles for it here from this guy so what we can do is just do our lg loading p and we'll change this around a little bit first give it a text align center and then we'll just give it a top then of negative 50 pixels and see how that looks. So obviously 50 pixels was way too much. Uh, let's try going down to like 20 and maybe a little bit more. So we'll do 25 and that should actually be pretty close to what we're looking for. So I think if we zoom out now and take a look, I think that we're getting pretty close to the styling that we actually have there. So we'll just say that that's good enough because I actually want to start scripting this a little bit for you guys. So if we jump in to our index page now, let's minimize this so we can see what's going on. So we have our game module and in our game module, we'll actually build something to handle this. So as you see, we already have a loop in here. So this loop is what's updating every frame. So we can use this to actually update this timer. So there's a couple of global variables we're gonna actually need to store here. So let's start making a couple of variables here. So the first one we wanna do is actually store the total amount of time that we want this loading bar to go for. Because in this case, we're actually gonna be kind of faking this loading bar a little bit. So uh, we, you know, we can pick a time, like maybe three seconds or like five seconds that we want this loading bar to actually go for while the game is rendering and everything in the background. So. What we'll do is we'll just say that we want the loading duration to be 5,000 milliseconds. So obviously five seconds there. So if we want it to be five seconds, so we can go ahead and do that. And then what we wanna do is just go ahead and set a Boolean to let us know whether we're loading. So we could just say is loading and then set that to false. 
So now what we want to do is when we first get the game ready, uh, right here in it is what gets called when the game first starts. And then it will call ready, and ready is the thing that actually does all the stuff that we're looking for. It draws all of our information out and uh, sets up everything that we need for the game. So what we'll do in here is we'll say is loading equals true. So as soon as the game calls the ready, we'll set that is loading to true. And then what we'll go ahead and do is make another loop function that we want to call every frame. So what we'll do is say update loading bar in this case. So we'll build this function here at the bottom. And then inside of the loop, obviously we want that to actually get called. So we'll call update our loading bar function. And then in here, our first thing we want to do is we want to check to see is the game loading. So if the game is loading, then we want to call the stuff inside of this if statement. So we want to say that this is what we're actually going to be animating right here. So what we'll do is copy that ID. And then we'll say, well, let's make another function that's actually the loading bar uh, element in this case. And we'll set it to null by default. But what we're going to do is in here, just set that loading bar element equal to the doc, grab the element by the ID, and just grab that actual bar element and save it when we first tell it that it's ready. And we'll actually save that before we start loading or set loading to true because we want to actually make sure that bar is saved before we start calling anything. So now we jump inside of our update loading bar function. And now what we want to do is there's a few things we want. So obviously we're going to want a number between zero and one because we want that scale on that bar to go from zero to one when it actually loads. So we want zero scale and then one scale when we get here. So in this case, what we can do is just take, okay, so I'm gonna change this a little bit again because I just realized we're gonna need two variables anyways. So we have our loading duration and then we'll just have our loading time right now. So this will actually tell us what how much time has passed and when we get to 5,000, we want to actually call to actually start this game. But, so what we'll do here is we want to just, in this case, say that our loading time plus equals the amount of time that it's been which would be our frame time minus our last frame time. So now what we're doing is every frame just adding that time to this value that starts at zero right here. And now that makes it really easy for us to grab that percentage because basically all we have to do then is take our loading bar element and just set the style dot transform equal to a scale X in this case of that loading time that we're currently on divided by the loading duration. So basically if we're at zero and we divide by our 5,000, we would get zero. If we were at 2,000 and divided by that 5,000, we would get, you know, our 0.4. So that's super cool. I mean, that's like, <laughs> I was actually, I'm actually kind of surprised at how easy that was to actually set up. So then what we can do is just add one more thing at the end where we have an if statement that checks to see if our loading time is greater than or equal to our loading duration. That means that we obviously made it to 5,000 and we want to stop this from calling. So we're just gonna set is loading equal to false. And that will immediately stop our function from getting called here. So now I believe that this is all we need to get this working, so let's try it. So see, now we actually have that bar animating up over those five seconds. That's like super cool, that's what we wanted. We now have that bar, so whenever we refresh, it just will count all the way up to our 100% and then stop, which is super cool. So now let's just say we want to actually set this percentage now. So the percentage is super easy too, because all we have to do is just grab the actual, well, we'll make a span around this number, and we'll just go ahead and delete that and default it to 0% and put the percentage outside of here just so we don't have to rewrite that. So we have our number now that we want to write. So let's just go ahead and give this span an ID. And we'll just do an LG loading, uh, we'll just say time, even though it's not really the time, but we'll go ahead and copy that and use it in here. And so what we want to do is basically just now set, in this case, I'm just going to grab the actual element, not like I did with the last one. But if we just do this and paste that in here and we'll do our inner HTML, and set that equal to, basically just take the same value we had here, but we're just going to be multiplying it by 100 to get us that actual decimal value. And now what we wanna do is just go ahead and add a parse int. 
Or we'll do a math.round because when this gets up to 99, it might not make it all the way to 100. So we'll actually see what happens with that. So let's make sure that this is working now. So now you see that our percentage is going up and that's super cool. It gets to 100 and stops, which is exactly what we wanted. So it's coming along nicely. Awesome, so now let's just add one more thing to this. So basically what we want to happen is we want that box to actually move with the bar as it's going up, but we only want it to do it when it gets to a certain point. So to do that, we can go ahead and grab our actual loading bar, or in this case, our percentage div that we made, and we wanna copy that. And inside of our index, just say that we want to if this value, which I should make a variable for it, but I'm lazy right now, this value is greater than, let's say 0 0.1, then we want to animate the doc.get element by ID in our LG loading percent. And we want to style this now with a transform and set the transform and we'll just translate 3D. So ideally you would actually set this with a variable normally, but I'm just kind of doing this sloppy right now just to like kind of do it quicker. Um, because what we actually need is we need a percentage of that actual divs width. So if we look in our CSS, you'll see that our loading is actually set to a width of 500 pixels. So we need to know that 500 because we need to know how much we're going out of. So in this case, what we would do is take this variable again. Again, I should make a separate thing for this. Do that and multiply it by our 500. So now what it's going to do is basically just get a percentage of that 500. And then if we do pixels for that and then zero on the Y and the Z values, let's actually see what that looks like. So now you'll see that it's actually moving, but it's obviously not in on the right side of where it was supposed to be. So the reason why it's doing that is because we're doing greater than 0.1, but we're not accounting for that 0.1 when we do this part. So we need to basically subtract 0.1 from this value that gets done. So what we can do is just jump in here and actually subtract 0.1 from that value that gets taken. So now you'll see that it did what it was supposed to do, but we obviously have to make it more than 0.1 because it's like right in the middle. So if we just change this maybe to, let's try two. So if we do 0.2 for those, let's try it now and see, you'll see it's still too, it was too much. So we have to go ahead and adjust that value a little bit and maybe like right in between. So let's try like one point or 0.15 and that should hopefully be pretty close to what we're looking for. So that's actually looking pretty good right there. I think this is looking pretty awesome now and it was actually pretty simple to code. I mean, this is all it really took to get it working inside of our loop. Basically just grabbing our the differences in our frame times and saving it as our new loading time and then, you know, a couple of other things to get this working. It works pretty well now. All right, awesome guys. Well, I feel like this video was a lot longer than usual. Maybe I'm wrong. I'll probably edit some stuff out just to keep it like a little bit shorter. I'm not sure if I did this video too quick for you guys, if it was confusing, but remember if it was, leave those questions down below and I will definitely be happy to answer them. As well as suggestions about the videos or the game or like something you wanna see specifically, be sure to leave that down below. Make sure to like the video, that helps me out so much. And uh, be sure to subscribe to my channel if you want to keep up with these videos. So my face is gonna be on the screen right here. And you can just go ahead and click on that and subscribe to my channel and you won't miss a single thing. So I will see you guys in the next episode. Peace.